Okay, so the facts roll in exactly like I said that they would. Now there's all these reviews for people that are hardcore Nikon fanboys, and you know, I've got a pile of Nikons and more Nikon lenses than anybody you'll ever meet. The reviews are rolling in from these shocked Nikon fanboys going, What? Why, <laughs> why is the base ISO performance so horrible on the Nikon D5? This is one of several little videos I made, uh, a bunch of verbal notes to myself when I was actually going over the Nikon D5. I made like a dozen different videos making notes and then did some testing and uh, it is just atrocious. The build quality is just horrible. Um, I didn't do a bunch of uh, ISO testing but I have actually mentioned this months ago that what people don't understand is ISO people ask, well how great is the low ISO performance? Well that's fine but ISO has not a damn thing to do with light gathering. It is applied gain. It is neither sensitivity nor is it exposure. The future of uh, camera improvements is going to be in uh, autofocus speed and there's new technology for that. And the future is going to be in uh, enormous dynamic range and I mentioned that months ago that there'd be new technology and it was just announced like a month ago that there was new uh, uh, technology adaptive resistance so the dynamic range is going to explode to basically three times what it currently is by applied adaptive resistance uh, for light gathering. Um, so check a bunch of links that I have below where these things are rolling in. It turns out that the base ISO on the Nikon D5 is the absolute worst of any Nikon ever. The worst. Um, some of these test shots are rolling in at ISO 100 and 200 and they're like, oh my god, the shadow noise is just off the scale. And uh, you can see the links below for that. And I've said before that um, <clears throat> you can have like the Nikon D7100, D7200, perfect example. Nikon D7100 has issues in high ISO banding, but they're way up there where most people would never experience it. So they kind of fixed that with the Nikon D7200. And I said, when the Nikon D7200 rolls out, it'll have an issue with low ISO, uh, shadow uh, noise. They said, oh, you're full of crap. Well, it turns out the Nikon D7200 rolled out and it has low ISO shadow issues. Same problem with the Nikon D5. You cannot see the limitations of a G over T or gain over time. There's nothing has changed in the past 20 years, actually longer than that. We're talking about DSLR technology and G over T, gain over time. You have limitations on shutter speed, amount of light that reaches the sensor. You have limitations on the aperture and the speed of the lens. Everything else is firmware. It's firmware. It's signal processing. That's what people don't get. People keep talking about the sensor. Oh, the sensor on the Nikon D5 is different. The sensor on so on. It's not the sensor. It's signal processing. Applied gain and signal processing. Uh, the channels on the AD converters and the signal to noise ratio firmware that uh, is weighted to however Nikon or Canon or anybody else wants to weight it. it means it's weighted to a specific end use. Now, here's a fact. Um, Nikon D4, D4S, for example. Wedding shooters use low ISO on their Nikon D4, D4S, or their Nikon D3, or even the D810 here. Let's just talk about the flagship cameras. They're indoors shooting a wedding, for example. They got a pair of Nikon D4, D4S's. Now they got to crank up the ISO because they can't use flash photography. You know, they got to crank out the shots. <laughs> High ISO, great, they got them. That's fine. Then they step out and they take some portrait shots with their Nikon D. This is this is a standard worldwide. Uh, someone with a, a Nikon D3, D3X, but now Nikon D4, D4S. They're shooting indoors. They take them outside. They have to have good uh, low ISO performance. Some of these people that are Nikon butt hurt Nikon fanboys are like, well, the Nikon D5 is designed. For a photo, and I've said that, that's exactly what it's designed for. This is Nikon's flagship camera right here, the Nikon D810. So 36 megapixel camera, you, I can crop the piss out of it. I got two of them, it's, it's a winner. It's got a stealth shutter. It's had no recalls, by the way. It's got good low ISO performance, and it has actually extremely good high ISO performance. Not as good as the Nikon D750, but it's pretty damn close. It's not that far away. You will say, well, the Nikon D5 is a photojournalistic tool. You know, it's designed for, you know, shooting... Uh, you know, a well digger's butthole at 3 o'clock in the morning at the bottom of a well. You know, or, uh, you know, a coal miner's, you know, it, it, yeah, that, that's true. But people that buy this camera 
they're not just photojournalists. They want Nikon's flagship camera, and it is, but it's a flagship camera specifically for, for, for photojournalism. Where the Nikon D5 departs from the Nikon D4S is what people don't understand, is this camera is sucking hard, and you can see the links below. You know, I don't care if you don't believe me. I told you this is exactly the case. You cannot wait this camera. Waiting it means waiting it towards specific use. Um, towards the extremely high ISO performance and not have the low ISO performance suffer. The limitations of silicon sensor technology and G over T, which cannot be altered, you know, you got a certain speed of lens and you got a shutter speed. Well, that's, that's you know, whether it's a, a $300 Nikon or a $6,000 Nikon, that crap has not changed, nor can it change. Sensor technology has not radically changed in many, 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 many years. What has changed is radically fast signal processing. But you still can't wait it for one end without making the other end suffer. So people that are going to buy this camera for photojournalists, as photojournalists, which you, you don't need that much for newspapers and newsprint. You just don't. Um, if you want to crop the hell out of the shots, 20 megapixels is good. It's not great. It's certainly not a 30 megapixel, 36 megapixel of that camera. But people that are going to be buying this for weddings, they're going to notice that it, it works fine indoors for high ISO performance. Like, oh my god, the Nikon D5 is great. And then they're going to take it outdoors for low ISO portraiture of like receptions, you know, bride and the groom, outdoors underneath the trees and the sunlight. You know, they throw in some speed lights. They're like, damn! The shadow noise is just epically bad. And there are examples in that in the links below that you'll see. See, the Nikon D4, D4S, spanks the hell out of the Nikon D5 from ISO 100 to 6400. And that's an undeniable fact. I got the link below if you want to do a cross comparison. I don't care if you take my word for it. Um, <clears throat> I said that the limits of silicon sensor chip technology is a known entity. The rest of it is just signal processing. Performance turns out to be on the Nikon D5 about a half a stop better at high ISO than the Nikon D4S. Oh, half a stop. Wow, that's really drastic, huh? Noise reduction doesn't have a damn thing to do with the sensor. It has to do with signal processing, AD converter, and SNR firmware. You know, it doesn't have a damn thing to do with it. Uh, high ISO doesn't have a damn thing to do with light. It doesn't have nothing to do with light. Rather, with signal processing. It is applied gain, period. All ISO has not a damn thing to do with light any more than gain, the gain knob on the professional and the ham radio has anything to do with the signal received. It has to do with applied gain. Not exposure, not sensitivity, not light. You see, when you're talking about three million, have you seen the pictures out of this camera? You can check the link below. Have you seen the pictures out of this thing at like two million, three million ISO? They're so horrible, they look like abstract art. You don't know if you're looking at a gorilla's butt or if you're looking at uh, the side of a barn on the scenic New Hampshire, the pictures are that bad. It's like, uh, well, this what's, what's the BS Nikon was actually saying? They're trying to sit, Nikon wants to sell this to anybody and everybody. Here they are trying to pimp it out to people that are like spies and policemen that are shooting like in really, really dark. The staggering ISO of 3,280,000 offering near night vision capability. Well, I have night vision capability myself now, both forward-looking infrared and infrared and starlight, and this thing can do nothing like starlight or infrared or night photography. That are well beyond the visible range of the human eye. This is Nikon talking. This extreme sensitivity is the benefit for photojournalists as well as surveillance and security applications. In other words, at 2 million, 3 million, 1 million ISO, the pictures out of this thing, you can check it. Okay, in the link below, they are staggeringly horrible. You can't tell if you're looking, like I said, at a monkey's butt or the side of a barn. You, I mean, you, you've got no idea the pictures of that, but what is that? I have no idea. You know, maybe you could crank it up to a million ISO and take a shot in the middle of the dark and read a license plate barely. Barely, maybe. Barely, maybe. So high ISO performance is BS, and this is what people that don't know what the hell goes on the inside of a camera don't know. It has nothing to do with light. It has nothing to do with the gain over time. It is applied gain. Um, and all of this can be remedied a hundred times better than in camera using uh, noise uh, reduction software like Topaz plugins or uh, Denoise projects. And uh, the other thing that uh, I said the Nikon D5 is just a horrible value. Even if the Nikon D5, and I canceled my order, if the Nikon D5 uh, was a fence sitter, I still got it. But the way the Nikon is currently, the D5, even if it was $3,000, I would still call it a horrible value. It's just a horrible value. The slow autofocus is horrible. 
The poor, the poor build, build quality is horrible. The horrific low ISO performance makes it a killer. Anybody that wants to use this thing for weddings is screwed. Because it'll work great indoors in low light. Like, hooray, the Nikon D5 is awesome. It's not, not really any better than the Nikon D4. The skin tones are horrible, too, by the way. I've got the link below for that as well. The skin tones compared to the Nikon D4, D4S are horrible at high ISO. This thing sucks. From ISO 100 to ISO 6400. Sucks! So wedding photographers are going to be happy with this thing indoors, and they're going to, th they're going to just crucify it outdoors. And uh, wait and see, because that's exactly what's going to happen. All these reports are building. I've got like six blinks below that you can check. Um, so Nikon's uh, flagship cameras are not just used for sports uh, and action and photojournalistic use. They're used for conventional photography. Um, this is the reason why the Nikon D810 is still Nikon's flagship camera for weddings, portraiture, and certainly so for landscapes. And certainly so for wildlife. Um, you got 36 megapixels, there's no AA, no AA filter, anti-aliasing filter, so it makes a perfect camera for landscapes. Uh, for portraiture, you do have better intertonal gain on the larger photo sites than the Nikon D750 over the D810, but the D750 doesn't have the crop capability that the D810 does, nor does it have the stealth shutter, nor does it have the lack of the anti-aliasing filter, because the D750 does have an AA filter, which means the D750 is not ideal for landscape photography. Um, so the Nikon D5 was a loser. There's questions about whether this camera was rushed to market for the upcoming Summer Olympics of this year. I mean, Nikon would have committed epic failure if this camera was not ready for the Olympics that are coming up. So it makes me wonder if they rushed it for that. Also, too, by the way, Nikon has an enormous history in the past. They always have. Of uh, You're enrolled in a subscription service. You know why Adobe now has gone to subscription? You pay $14.95 a month, every month, month after month. And then they keep updating it rather than you buy the software and then you buy another version later. Nikon's basically got a subscription server. Nikon came out with the D3, like, well, then they came out with the D3S, then they came out with the D3X. Nikon came out with the D4, then they came out with the D4S. This camera has got so many issues that I guarantee you within a year's period of time, one year or less, that the D5S will roll out, and that will be Nikon's new replacement for the Nikon, and it will fix the issue. You are enrolled in a subscription service to Nikon. You buy this expensive damn camera. You know, if they're going to do that, which is exactly what they're doing, then don't damn well charge me $6,500. Or what you can do is that you can charge me $6,500 for it, but then have an enormous trade-in value on it. See, all these companies, they have to have the next two or three items in process. They don't roll out the latest and greatest of anything. No company really does that. If they do that, I mean, they would rather crap, crap themselves in their own diaper and, and roll on the ground burning in fire than give you the latest and greatest that they have in the works. That is never going to happen. The Nikon D5 is the latest camera to hit the market, but as sure as hell, as sure as I'm sitting here, as sure as the sun rises in the east, as sure as hell is not the latest and greatest that Nikon has behind their closed doors waiting to be rolled out. They don't do that. No company does that. It's not a fault to Nikon. Every company is doing that. You're getting what they want to release when they want to release it, but it sure as hell never is the best that they have to offer. Canon does this, Nikon does this, uh, even Fuji does this. Although Fuji uh, has uh, really no examples of that. I mean, they waited a long time for the X-Pro1 to X-Pro2 update, but this video is certainly not about them. Um, so wedding photographers are going to be both happy and really pissed at this camera. And I already said that any camera that is heavily weighted in ISO towards high ISO performance is going to suck, suck fanny in low ISO. And that's exactly what the D5, people are like, oh my god, why are there, why are there, this is ISO 100, why is the shadow noise so awful? It's disgusting. That's exactly what I told you, people. Oh, you only handled that camera for a little over an hour. You know, you fat, bald, tattooed schmuck. I mean, there's no way you could get, how many Nikon DSLRs do I have to own to be able to judge a camera quickly? It wasn't bolted to the table like, you know, some of the top YouTube photographer people here that, you know, have a, a billion subscribers, you know, they're reviewing stuff that has the compact flash card taped shut and it's bolted to the table. That's not a review. I mean, I stuck a compact flash card in this thing and it wasn't bolted to the table. But I don't need uh, 10 days or 10 hours to review the fact that the Nikon D4 has poor build quality. It has a horrible low ISO performance. It has a nasty autofocus issues. Um, 
But ISO aside, you know, the camera is not worth it. It's a poor value. But you are enrolled in Nikon subscription services if you buy this. Just like Adobe. You, you pay every month. And that's what you're doing with Nikon. You know, in a year, basically a year, they'll roll out the Nikon D5S. You know it's a damn fact. They'll be proven right. And uh, it'll be a bigger improvement over the Nikon D5. And then everybody will clamp. See, the, the serious thing where everybody wins on this horrible camera, and this is where you need to listen. Everybody wins on this horrible camera. You got three people. You, want, you got the people that want a good camera, you got the gear sluts, and then you got the company. And here is how every one of those three people wins. Nikon wins because they're, they're pimping new stuff for you to sell. Okay, that's a big win for them. Number two, the button sniffing gear sluts who want the latest. I've got the latest and greatest Nikon! Well, that's good. You know, they buy it and they're happy. The people like me, the smart ones, the wise ones that want an awesome camera, what happened And all these people in England, 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 you know, pardon me, England, but your prices suck. The prices in England and the UK suck on camera. They're just astronomical. But all these people are telling me the Nikon D4, D4S has just plummeted right into the, the crapper. And they're all rushing out to get a Nikon D4S. So everybody wins. Now that Nikon came out with this thing, an awesome, a really awesome camera, a better camera than this, the Nikon D4 or D4S, is now rock bottom cheap. So people who want it, a really good camera, they're getting an awesome camera. So everybody wins. Nikon wins, the button sniffers that want the latest and greatest win, and the people like me and other intelligent people that want an awesome camera are winning because this introduction means the D4S price drops in the gutter. I gotta have the latest and greatest. Let's get rid of the Nikon D. I'll take your Nikon D4 from you. How much do you want for it? Okay, here's the money. <sighs> so everybody wins. So it's not all bad news. And I never said that this camera, you know, is gonna, you know, molest you in the middle of the night. I never said that it was a, I never said that it was a, a Canon. I never said it was a, 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 a Minolta. <laughs> the ultimate insult, right? Um, so, no, this camera's not going to molest you for, for $6,500, though. It's just a disgusting value. And, uh, but, you know, when you buy it, I win, because now the Nikon D4, D4S is dirt cheap. So, I'm a winner. The person that buys this uh, thinks they're getting something awesome, when, in fact, they're not. But as long as they're happy, who gives a damn? So, they're a winner, and Nikon's a winner. So, everybody on this dirty, uh, this the disgustingly poor-valued camera is a winner. And that's also undeniable. So, thanks for watching, and uh, check the links below. And uh, once again, I am, of course, proven right. This camera is shocking people, but not in a good way, in a bad way. It's exactly what I told you it was. Bye.